Lakes Region class. This is Marisol Baldock. I am the teaching director for the Manchester class. Your wonderful teaching director and my good friend Michelle asked me to do a, a brief presentation regarding the new um, in prison ministry that we are doing this year. And it just happens that today, the two core leaders that go to the Concord Correctional Facility uh, did a presentation during our opening today. So I'm including that presentation after this message. I just wanted to tell you how excited we are that God allowed us to be part of that in prison and beyond ministry here in New Hampshire. It was a challenge in the beginning. Everything was a new territory, uh, uncharted territory. And we started our class where we were the pioneers for having a remote core group as part of a class. Typically, the in prison and beyond ministry is a class in, a, in and of itself. But with us, we started having a remote core group coming from our class. But that also, even though it was exciting and we, all, all the class was excited about it, that also presented challenges as it was, uh, for instance, the financial part of it, because we had to provide now, not only for our class expenses and our children's uh, expenses, which is we have a large children community, but we had to spend on everything that had to do with the prison ministry. We created these uh, books that had to fit the criteria and all the stipulations that the um, facility had. The, uh, I had the close contact with the chaplain and they, there was thing that we couldn't bring loose pages, we couldn't bring spirals, we couldn't bring, there was a whole list of things. So um, we created this, that is for, from the condensed version, but it had to be one page lengthwise. So this is a one page, it's not, single pages is, is inexpensive, but to make it the long um, lengthwise, and then the the um, the front cover, obviously, but we try to make it as, as as simple as possible. And but we came up to with this. Um, it costs a, a couple hundred dollars to have that those done, and now I have to place another order for Ephesians. So even though it's exciting what the Lord is doing, uh, it does weigh heavy on our class to have this now on your, our shoulders. We just ask you more than anything that you would support us uh, in your prayers. There are 120 women in that prison and it really is my heart to reach them all. Um, for now, we only have a few, but it is my desire to bring them Bibles, give them uh, as gifts. We would like to, to make some diplomas for them for completing the courses and little things like that that we are able to to bring in um, to encourage them to do the Bible study. I would appreciate your prayers. We always need, we are exposed to a lot there. And if you have any questions, please, 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 please let Michelle know and she will let me know as well. May the Lord richly bless you. Ladies who have the privilege of going to the prison every week to uh, lead the court group there. So they're gonna share a little bit with us. Hi. Um, so a few years ago, uh, I was going through some leadership training and and really all leadership is personal leadership and the best leadership lessons come straight out of the scripture. And I was thinking to myself as I'm going through this program, like this would be so awesome to bring into the prison because it's basically like a covert gospel. 
And so I prayed, I'm like, all right, Lord, well, I have no idea how I would get into the women's prison. I mean, I've been married for 30 years. I know how I could do it the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> but Lord, if you would want me there, you're gonna have to like drop this in my lap, open doors or whatever. Um, but I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna leave that to you. Um, and so when Marisol called me last spring, she's like, Katrina, we're so excited. We're not going to leave where we got. We're going into the women's prison. And, um, and then she said, would you consider? <laughs> There's a little bit of a running joke. I think maybe Marilyn started or Heather. And she said, if you get the, would you consider that from Marilyn, or not Marilyn, from my Marisol, it's because she's been talking to God and your name came up. <laughs> so anyway, she said, would you consider, you know, doing, you know, being part of the team that goes into the prison to, to you know, lead a core group? And, um, I wanted to make her sweat a little bit, so I didn't tell her about that previous prayer from a few years ago. <laughs> and sometimes I would pray about it, um, but I knew that you know this was God opening that door um, without me having to knock off my husband. It's tempting. <laughs> uh, anyway, so it's been amazing. I got I had not met uh, Jean before we got teamed up for this, and I'm a little bit of like a bull in a china shop. And, and Jean is like the perfect partner. I'm so thankful for her. <laughs> She's so calm and gracious and kind and like, I don't know the place. Um, but it's been such a blessing. We talk about it sometimes afterwards. And like, wow, they. We've had women come and go. Um, work schedules. Um, we did have one one scary day when a prisoner came in who was very uh, angry uh, and a lot of distress and. And I just started to pray. She was slamming things around and kind of hustling around the room. And we got all look at each other like, all right, Lord, help us out here. Uh, what's going to happen? Where is this going to go? You know, and the chaplain was there that day. And she just gently herded that lady into her office and had a little chat with her. And we, um, a couple other women came in. And we, we took time to pray for her as she was in the office with the chaplain. And she came out and joined our study. And after about five minutes, she said, you know, I feel so much better now. And one of the other women reached over and touched her hand. She said, that's because we prayed for you. Mm -hmm. And it's just really touching. She <laughs> inspires us every every week with her faith and her enthusiasm for um, studying God's word. And there have been some things she's convicted me on. When she first started studying, she said, I had the hardest time memorizing scripture and, and the verse, you know, the references. I was like, yeah, me too. And and then after a couple of weeks, she's like, they make us write it. This is the most awesome thing. They make us write the scripture like every day. And now I can memorize it. And I just felt a little convicted by that. I've been here for 16 years. And every time I'm like, oh, I have to read the scripture again. <laughs> so anyway, um, Jean's going to say a few things. And she's got a letter from our, our friend in Concord. Hi. So Marisol had mentioned maybe two years ago, a year and a half, that about the prison ministry, and it was something that I had also been thinking of and hearing that word. So after a couple of weeks of prayer, I went up and, and said that I would be willing if, if that door opened, and I think Marisol did a lot of um, behind-the-scenes work to make that happen. Unfortunately, it did. Unfortunately, Katrina um, did my part. Um, I think we balance well and, and um, care for what we're doing and believe in what we're doing. I think that's the most important part. When we talked about the sharing, <clears throat> which we thought was going to be at the end of the, the thing, um, our friend, um, wrote a letter and she said no I want to re rewrite it and she rewrote it and gave it to me and so I'm going to read her thoughts for you. I have been attending community Bible study since it began here at the prison which was 9-27-23. I had the pleasure of meeting Marisol, Jean, and Katrina. I enjoy the fellowship with Jean and Katrina, and I'm so grateful that I also have the opportunity to watch Marisol's sermons on video. So far, we've studied Ruth and 1 Samuel. We're currently studying 2 Samuel. 
Before starting this Bible study, I didn't know much about David and Saul. Each week I learned something new and I continue to be amazed at how good God is. My favorite part of community Bible study is that we have to write out the weekly scripture verse <laughs> each day of the homework. This helps me to memorize scripture. Being referred to other scriptures, references, in other books is something that I enjoy doing. This, keeps, this helps me to see how the stories relate to each other. I've been encouraging others to attend community Bible study. I succeeded in, in getting one person to attend. After the first group she attended, she stated that she loves it. I look forward to attending community Bible study each week, and I love the, to study the Bible and sharing God's word. Mm -hmm. And she truly does. She's, I think we're both amazed that her lessons are completely filled out. There are no blanks. There's no... Mm -hmm gives her ands, and then she looks and she says, well, what, is that right, or is that, you know, or what do you think, and she's answering everything. And there have been some others that have come, one, one lady came, and then we believe that she was let out of prison, that her time was up, but we're not quite sure, and we don't ask those questions. A couple of others have come, and then their work schedule <clears throat> has changed so that they are not able to continue. So I guess I would ask for prayers from all of you, witnessing and trying to get people and, and to come and their interest. And I did tell her that, you know, just saying maybe we're doing the New Testament might make it a little easier that, for their being willing to come. But to open up those schedules and, and, uh, and open up their hearts and maybe we'll get a few more people. Maybe we'd like to have a few So just a, some prayer requests. Actually, the most well-attended uh, religious group in the prison is uh, the witches. And so if you feel led to pray against that, it's become very popular and continues to grow. Um, and that's, that's concerning to what few believers are, are in there, um, including, you know, some things that used to come to Bible study, you know, I guess it was one is going to that group instead. And then um, a friend herself, uh, her grandson has an appointment today uh, for a, a psychological evaluation. He's really struggling, um, lives in Littleton, and has, it's gonna be, they're worried that he has a schizophrenia, I think it was, and so if, if you would just join us in praying against that and really what this little boy needs is Christ and and she knows that and she's um, been encouraging her daughter to bring him back to church and um, she's sending them Bibles and um, really trying to share Christ with her family and praying for unity and for God's love to just take over um, so those are the, the prayer requests that we have from you and uh, thank you for your time